Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. In this session we're continuing making the base model of the gun and we'll end up with a simple low poly blunderbuss. If you like what I do and want to make a full game ready character then take a look at my character course and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel for lots of educational content. Okay so here's where we got to last time and we're going to edit the basic shapes. So I'll go into object mode, come around to the front and I want to create a cube down here. I can shift right click to move my 3D cursor and then shift A to add mesh and cube. Then I can scale it down roughly into position, then into edit mode and start moving these things around. But I can't select like this because I won't select the other side. So remember, you need to be in X-ray mode. So one to go to front view, box select like this, G to grab, and move these into position. Box select, G to grab, and box select, G to grab. Now I can select these ones down here, but I can't quite grab them. What we can do is hold down control and right click, and you can lasso select like that. That's quite useful. Then I can E to extrude. I'll just do a couple of extrusions down here to the end. So just keep pressing E to extrude and pull them out and then box select and push them into position. Okay, we're pretty much there, but this shape is a little bit more awkward. I'll need to put a couple of loop cuts in here. So control R and I can use my wheel to create more loop cuts like this and then left click and I can move them around and left click to select. And now I can box select these and start moving those into position. And I'll just even these ones out slightly because I'll probably adapt the shape later on and have a bit of a curve in it as well. Okay, so I want to get these end ones. I can select those and shift box select the other ones. E to extrude and scale outwards. So I'm scaling outwards to that shape there and then E to extrude and pull those outwards and move them into position. Let's go into object mode, out of X-ray mode and have another look at that. And I'll just thin it a little bit. So S then Y just a little bit for now because we're going to curve the shape around a little bit later. Okay, back to front view, back to edit mode and into X-ray mode, lasso select by control, right click and draw, E to extrude, S to scale. Oh, now I've done something interesting here. If you look, I've got a vertex at the back going out as well. So I left click or you could press escape to cancel it, but I left click and undo that. And I had an extra vertex selected there. So, Control box select, we'll get rid of that. E to extrude, S to scale, and I'm okay this time. E to extrude to round about there. E to extrude, S to scale to bring it inwards. Okay, E to extrude, and I'll bring this one up to round about here. E to extrude, bring it to the front, grab, and then rotate, and I can push those into position roughly around there. And I'll just start moving them about a bit now. Let's take another look. We're slowly getting there. Like I say, I'll add some curve later on, but now let's start adding the smaller items. So one to go to front view, into object mode, shift right click, and then let's get a cube for the bottom here. So mesh, then cube, scale it right down. I'll start at the top here, into edit mode, into x-ray mode, select those bottom faces, D to grab, E to extrude, G to grab, and so on. Could have a bit more of a curve to this, I suppose. E to extrude, G to grab, R to rotate. Now when you rotate, it does sort of skew it slightly, so you'd probably need to just adapt that slightly like this. So let's just quickly see what that looks like. Might make that just a touch wider, so scale Y around about there. And let's zoom in, shift right click to move the 3D cursor, shift A to add, and choose a cube. Scale that right down, and we can create the trigger. So one on my keyboard, G to grab, into edit mode and into x-ray mode. Start moving these into position. E to extrude and E to extrude and scale that end down a bit. And we've got a basic trigger. How about this sort of flint thing at the side? Shift right click, shift A to add and a cube. Scale it down into position. So all the time we're doing pretty much the same thing of basic box modeling, E to extrude, control R for loop cuts and moving things around. So into edit mode, G to grab. This is a slightly more complex shape. So I'll just bring this to here, just looking at the outline. 
we can extrude these out this way and extrude them again. G to grab. And this is quite awkward at the end here. So what I'll do is I'll move that to the middle there and I'll actually sort of create a bit more of a point at the end and then grab all these and oh, make sure I don't get that one to so hold down control and box select that one. Then I can extrude that out and move these into position. So over to here and the last one, we want to get these and extrude them out this way. So we've got some sort of thingy at the front there. Okay, let's go back to solid mode and see what's going on. So in object mode with tab, I can scale that in the Y to make it a bit thinner and just grab it in the Y to bring it across slightly. We're certainly getting there. Now let's just think about a few of these details. So on the telescopic sights, let's go into front view, into edit mode, and I can select all these faces along here by going to face mode. And when you're in face mode, you can alt left click on one of the lines going across the face loop you want to get. So this one, for example, will select that face loop there. If I did it the other way, on one of the edges going this way, it selects face loop going along there. And it stops where it meets something like an end gone or a triangle. So it will stop at the end here. Whereas these ones, if I alt left click on those, they go all the way around because it's all quads. So I can alt left click on that. Let's go back to front view and then press E to extrude. And you can see it extruding there. S to scale, but it's scaling outwards along the X axis as well as the Y and Z. So if I press shift X, it will constrain it so it doesn't go along the X axis and we end up with our sort of bracket for our site. So I'll do that once again. Alt left click on one of the lines going across to select the face loop. E to extrude, S to scale, and it's coming out and then shift X so it doesn't go in the X axis. Now I forgot to go to front view for this so I can get it roughly right. Go to front view and then S shift X again so it doesn't go in the X axis and make sure they're perfectly lined up. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so what about the glass at the front here then? Well, what I want to do is hide the reference image when I'm in perspective view like this so I can easily see the front. What we can do if I go to object mode and select that empty, the reference image, and we can see it just across here. We've got some properties down here, object data properties. If I click on that, we can actually turn it off in perspective mode. So it looks like it's disappeared, but if I go to one, it's still there. So when I need it, I can go to orthographic mode, which you can see there, one on your keyboard, and orthographic is ticked. But as soon as I press my middle mouse button to go out of orthographic mode, I can just see my gun. And it's looking kind of fun at the moment. Okay, so selecting the site, into edit mode again, let's select that front face there. I am in face mode, so remember face mode up here. Three is the shortcut for that. And I want to bring this face in. So I can press E to extrude and S to scale to bring it in like this. But there's a quicker way, I can just press I, which is inset. So it does an extrusion and a scale all in one. So around about there, and then if I press E to extrude and pull it out slightly, and then S to scale and I to inset, I'm creating that glass at the front. So G then X and pull it out. And I've got that sort of glass bit at the front like that. I have still got an end gone there. Don't panic. It's okay to model with end gons. I'm probably gonna get lots of questions about that. But whenever you model with end gons like this, it just means if I want to select an edge loop going around here, it stops at the end because it's an end gone. So it's much easier to model without end gons. And game engines, no, they can't read them, but it gets converted when it gets put into the game engine automatically. So don't worry about them. Okay, let's just quickly see how that's looking. We need an inset at the back here as well. So into edit mode, select that end face, I to inset, bring that in, and then E to extrude to bring it in that way. And what I'll end up doing is painting this pretty dark so we can hardly see it. Okay, a few more to do. So let's go into object mode, into edit mode, and one on our keyboard, there, that brings back our reference. And if I go to X-ray mode, you can see we've got these ones to do along here. So quick challenge, pause the video and have a go at that bit yourself. Okay, so hopefully you got on all right with that. I'll select that shape, tab to go to edit mode and make sure you're in faces. Alt left click on a line going across, E to extrude, S to scale and shift X so it doesn't go in the X axis. Same over here, Alt left click on one of the lines going across, E to extrude, S to scale, shift X so it doesn't go on the X axis. And then we've got those sort of brackety bits there. Let's just see how they're looking. And it's working out all right. We've got the end of the gun, so into edit mode, select the end of the gun, I to inset, and then E to extrude, and probably E to extrude again. 
and you can see it overlapping itself there make sure that never happens so I'll go out to the end here and then scale that in possibly a little bit further and then I'll just paint in black there okay so how are we looking it's quite fun really isn't it okay so we've made all our edits there we'll certainly need to refine the shape more but it's starting to look quite nice a sort of low poly blunderbuss thunder gun thanks again for all your support thanks for those that watch an advert those that donate and those that are patrons if you've got any questions or thoughts then comment below so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time